Hello, my name is Simonaz and welcome to another Simonaz Guide video. Today I want to tell you about rogue leveling tips and tricks in Season of Discovery. I've leveled four rogues up in Season of Discovery and I keep making more of them because it's just so fun. So I want to share some of the tips and tricks I've learned while leveling rogues that can make it fun and fast for you leveling your rogue up. I'm going to cover weapon choices, talent progression, as well as rune choices, and some tips and tricks for your poison quest and deadly brew rune quest while you're leveling up. Let's get right into it and talk about your weapon selection. That dagger that you've got at level one is really not what you want to be using with your shadow strike rune or your sinister strike ability. If an ability does not explicitly require you to use a dagger, like backstab, ambush, or mutilate, you do not want to be using a dagger. And it has to do with how the game calculates the damage of these abilities with different weapon types. You really want to be using a sword, mace, or fist weapon for your sinister strikes, shadow strikes, saber slashes, and hemorrhages that don't require the use of a dagger. So on Alliance, you're going to want to travel to Stormwind to get sword training or Ironforge for mace training. On Horde, you want to go to Undercity for swords and Thunderbluff for maces. A sword or mace doesn't really matter, just pick one, get rid of that dagger as soon as you can. Next tip is about professions. For most of the professions, I wouldn't bother leveling them up while leveling my character. The time investment that it requires to level something like leatherworking or engineering compared to the benefit you gain while leveling up just doesn't feel worth it to me. I tend to worry about those big professions at max level, but there is one secondary skill I will always level up on a rogue while leveling, and that's first aid. First aid is super good for rogues because it provides a quick and easy way to heal your character up. And unlike most classes, you don't have a mana bar to slow you down. You never have to wait between fights to refill your mana. The only thing that's gonna slow you down on a rogue is having low health, so having a quick and easy way to refill your health is super valuable. This next tip applies to pretty much every class, and that's that having a lot of bag slots is super good. If you have pretty limited inventory space, you'll find yourself having to go to town more often than you would want to just to empty out your inventory. So one of the best things you can spend your early money on is buying more bags, either from the auction house, from other players, but I would not recommend buying them from vendors because the vendor bags tend to be pretty overpriced compared to what you can get on the auction house. If I was starting a fresh brand new rogue on a new server and I didn't have resources on my account already, I would first buy four six slot bags, then I would buy sword training on a rogue as quickly as I could. I think those are the most impactful things you can spend your early coin on. When it comes to upgrading the equipment on your rogue as you level up, your main hand weapon is the most important and most impactful slot that you can upgrade. And frequently upgrading your main hand weapon is gonna have a big impact on your character's performance and your ability to kill enemies quickly. And if you kill enemies quickly, they deal less damage to you, so you also spend less time healing yourself between enemies. When selecting a main hand weapon, you primarily care about the weapon DPS, and you would also prefer that the weapon be a little bit slower and have a pretty high damage per hit. Those are the two most important qualities when selecting your main hand weapon. For your rune selection, the rune you get in the starting zone, Shadow Strike, is actually really, really good. In phase one, there aren't a lot of rogue runes that you could access at lower level that really help you out a lot. Uh, and Shadow Strike is just the perfect thing that you want to speed up your leveling. Shadow Strike costs half the energy of a Sinister Strike. It deals 50% more damage and it teleports you to the target. I mean, what's not to love? Everything about Shadow Strike is great. Some people will advocate for using Saber Slash cause it deals more damage than Sinister Strike over time with its damage over time component. I wouldn't recommend switching to Saber Slash until you find yourself taking more than 10 seconds to kill an enemy. Then you might be able to actually benefit meaningfully from the damage over time portion of Saber Slash. When you get to some of the higher level runes, you could use Deadly Brew Rune on your chest and between the eyes on your legs for easier enemies that aren't too difficult to kill and it'll speed you up and deal more damage. But if you're fighting an elite enemy or trying to tackle a really difficult quest, switching into the tanking runes like Just a Flesh Wound on your chest and Blade Dance on your legs are gonna ramp up your survivability so much that you're gonna be able to tackle much more difficult enemies. You won't kill them any faster, but they definitely won't kill you either. 
That brings us also to the leveling talents. If you're doing a dungeon leveling build, it's gonna look a little different than if you're doing a solo leveling build. And while you could use either of these builds in either of these types of leveling, of course, the one specialized for soloing is gonna be better at soloing, and the one specialized for dungeoning is gonna be better at dungeoning. For a solo leveling talent build, I'd fill the talents out like this, with the first two points in Improved Sinister Strike, then Remorseless Attacks, then we move down the combat tree to reach Repost at level 22. Repost is a super powerful ability, very low energy cost, deals a lot of damage and disarms your opponent, but you can only use it after you parry an enemy's attack. So it really only functions if enemies are attacking you, which doesn't happen very often in a group setting, but happens all the time in a solo setting. For dungeons, the Remorseless Attacks talent isn't as good since this talent only triggers when you actually get the killing blow on an enemy, and if you're in a group for a dungeon, you have three to four other people dealing damage and hitting enemies, and it's just much less likely that you're the one to land the killing blow, so Remorseless Attacks just isn't going to pop off that often. And with our dungeon build, unlike the soloing build, we're super focused on backstab. So I take the talents like this with Improved Sinister Strike, a couple points in dodge, then I get my improved backstab, and then I move over and take ranks of opportunity over in subtlety, all focused around just maxing out the power of backstab that we're gonna use while dungeoning. With all these tips, you're gonna be leveling up quite a lot, and around level 20, you'll be able to do your poison quest as well as the quest for your deadly brew rune. And while both these quests are technically possible to do at level 20, I strongly suggest waiting to level 22 so you can gain access to both Distract and Vanish from the Rogue Trainer that makes both these quests way easier. Uh, let's talk about the Poison quest first. This one's really important and unlocks one of your Rogue's class abilities, Poisons. The Alliance Poison quest sends you to a tower in the southeast corner of Westfall. Uh, there, you need to pickpocket a key from a malformed Defias drone outside the tower. Then you simply stealth to the top of the tower, sap the elite, and lockpick the chest next to the elite. Uh, both factions' poison quests will require you having at least 75 lockpicking skill, although you can go a little higher than that and make your success rate a little higher. The Horde poison quest is a bit more involved, and it sends you to a tower in Northern Barrens. There, you're again going to have to pickpocket a key off the foreman on the ground, but then in the tower, you're going to have to kill all the enemies in the tower. And on each level of the tower, the enemies are weak to a different ability. The enemies on the first floor will get one shot by ambush, but they're like level 24 or 25, so having distract to force them to face away from you will allow you to easily sneak up on them, get that ambush, and one shot them. The enemies on the mid level of the tower are weak to rupture, so just fight them, hit a rupture on them, it'll deal a huge amount of damage. Third level of the tower, they're weak to eviscerate. And when you go to the top level of the tower and fight the elite boss, he's weak to ambush. Although ambush doesn't one-shot him, it just deals a lot of damage. Be sure to have your evasion ready, a healing potion, and maybe a thistle tea to try to take out the boss there. That pretty much wraps up the difficult portion of your poison quests for both factions after doing the stuff in the tower. You're basically just going back to your town and turning stuff in. Next, we have the Deadly Brew Rune Quest, which was the most fun rune unlock I've done in all of Season of Discovery, even across all the classes I've played. And both factions do the Deadly Brew rune quest in the same place, in Shadowfang Keep Dungeon in Silver Pine Forest, which can be a little difficult for Alliance to get to. And you'll start this quest by visiting the cabin outside of Shadowfang Keep, and there's a little dead drop treasure chest that you interact with, that you start, and you get the Horn of Zelthos quest. This will suggest that you go to Stone Talon Mountains first before coming back to Shadowfang Keep, but we're not going to worry about that. We have a strategy to skip the Stone Talon Mountain portion, so we're just going straight into Shadowfang Keep. When you go into Shadowfang Keep, make sure you zone in completely alone. You can't be in a party, you can't be in a raid, or else the special quest mobs for your Deadly Brew rune quest will not spawn. We'll go towards the first Worgen boss here, just like you would in a normal group, but instead of killing the boss, we're just going to go hit the lever, talk to the NPC, and then vanish. When you talk to the NPC and click through the dialogue options, it triggers the NPC to go and open the courtyard door. And this is how you skip going to Stone Talon Mountains. That was gonna give you a bomb that blows open the door, but we can easily just open it this way. Once you have access to the courtyard, you're gonna stealth around the dungeon to find two special NPCs, Gemela and Geffel. 
and you're gonna have to pickpocket both of these. Now, stealthing around a lot of these NPCs can be pretty tricky because there are some tight corners and tight spaces where you might get detected. It's really, really useful to have distract to be able to force the enemies to face away from you so you can safely sneak behind them through this section. Once you've got both the key fragments from Gemela and Geffel, you'll be able to go back to the courtyard near the stables where there's a special chest and you can loot the Horn of Zelthos from that and then exit the dungeon. When you return to the cabin to turn in the Horn of Zelthos, it'll tell you that you have to wait a while and check back later for your reward. There's no actual timer on how long you have to wait. All you have to do is visit a major city and that will trigger the chest to have your reward in it. So for Horde, that's pretty simple. Walk up to the Sepulcher, fly to Undercity, fly back to the Sepulcher, walk right back. For Alliance, it can be a little more difficult because Iron Forge is really far away. But don't worry, you can actually zone in to Undercity as an Alliance and that'll count to trigger the chest to give you your Deadly Brew Rune. And the easy way to do that is to go up into Tirasfall Glades and just walk slightly into the sewer entrance of Undercity. There won't be any high level guards there for you to worry about. And just look for when you get that mail icon next to your minimap that says you have unread mail from your mysterious informant. C. And when you see that, that's when you know you're good to go back to the cabin and loot your Deadly Brew Rune. One final note is that if you haven't done your poison quest yet, the Deadly Brew Rune won't actually do anything. You do have to do your poison quest to be able to utilize the Deadly Brew Rune. I don't know exactly why, that's just the way it works. And with all that, you should be pretty close to being ready to raid in Phase 1 of Season of Discovery. While I am making this video during Phase 1, almost all the tips and tricks will be applicable in the future phases as well. Uh, a lot of this stuff is basic rogue leveling technique that's going to be valuable information no matter what phase we're in. If you want to check it out, I also have pre-raid gearing guides linked below and PV raid guides for like boss tips and tricks and talents you should be using in raids for phase one right now. And when the same guides come out for phase two, they'll be linked in the video description as well. So if you're watching this in the future, check those out. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a lot of fun in Season of Discovery. I know I am. And thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your support. Have a nice day.